As I always do, I succeeded. I'm the new Commonwealth British champion. You see, this is what I do. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Thanks for holding it for me. No problem, sir. <laughs> Charmaine Laval, so do you speak Greek? Uh, hey, of course. <laughs> Listen, I don't take any kind of malakias, and if anybody in the crowd gives me any shit, I tell them, esto, diallo. Oh, hey, there you this go. This Mavro knows what he's talking oh, about. Yeah. Yeah. Even I got that all one. All right, all right, let's get it going. <laughs> Yo, I bring the slaughter. I see you over there with the lemon in the water. As I keep on going, yo, I make it mad. Yo, I'm not like Vlad, but I see you with your paper and pad. As I keep going right now, I do what I like. All three of us are chilling. Three of us with the mics. As I keep on going, you know my rhyme is pure. I look at his laptop, it says now sure. As I keep it going, I'ma cut you. You made me a protein drink with peanut butter. Welcome back. We're back. They renewed us for season two. By day, I mean Dimitri. Uh, so we're back for season two, and uh, we needed some time off, but we had just too much fun doing this podcast with you guys, so uh, we decided to keep going. Last season, uh, our best uh, podcast, the one I had the most fun in and the one that people watched the most was about pro wrestling. Now, I don't know if that is because uh, I, have, I am a passionate fan of it, uh, or because we had a great guest, but uh, I guess we'll find out today because uh, Mr. Drew Onyx, you have quite big shoes to fill here. Cause, yeah, uh, you're putting pressure on me now, man. <laughs> I ain't as pretty as the girl that was here, man. She's a great wrestler. Yeah, well, we're, we're hoping for great things from you too. So uh, I got a lot of personality. <laughs> there you go. Makes up for the looks. Uh, so welcome. First of all, welcome to our show. Uh, glad that uh, we were able to get you on today. Uh, so I just want to go through uh, what got you to wrestling. Uh, where do you see it going and all this. But let's start from where you were uh, a, a kid. Uh, were you always uh, attracted to wrestling? Were you a big fan? Yeah, well, first of all, I'm very happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Me. And to answer that question, ha have I always been a fan? Most definitely, since I was six years old. Uh, the first time I saw pro wrestling, I equated it to comic books. You know what I mean? I was a big comic book fan, still am. And the first comic book I ever read was like Justice League. So all the different type of characters. And when you see uh, pro wrestling, you know, you have all the different characters. They dress almost similar. Yeah, uh, yeah. Pro wrestling it has the circus strongman uh, look. And comics derived that and uh, seeing the guys with the colorful masks and the capes and stuff like that. So from six years old, uh, without realizing I was a student, as soon as it was on TV, I couldn't stop watching it. Well, it's uh, it's funny that you say that, that it reminds you of cartoons because uh, of, uh, sorry, of a uh, comic books, because yeah. uh, I do see often, especially before when I used to watch it way more, it's all like superheroes come to life, right? Yeah. They all have their, their like magic power, which is yeah. the finishing move or... Or the, uh, you know, like the way they dress and yeah. like nowadays with what they're able to perform as, as, as athletes is just incredible. It's like they're flying out there. So it's, uh, it's really, really interesting that you describe it like that because that's how I saw it too. Well, you know, it's funny. Historically speaking, Superman was based, his design, the boots, the tights over the, uh, the underwear over the tights. Yeah. It was based from the circus strongman slash wrestlers because <laughs> the strongmen at the circus also part-time were pro wrestlers and what would happen is they would challenge the people in the crowd yeah. to be able to last with them so that look was actually derived from pro wrestling oh that's cool i didn't know that that's yeah. uh, something else uh, to know about pro wrestling uh now uh you, you grow up um you start watching wrestling do you immediately i mean like like i did with my brother or uh, I don't know if you have siblings, but do you immediately start imitating moves and doing stuff like that? Yeah, I, I used to until my mom and dad put the belt on me the first time I grabbed my brother and I dumped him on his head. So and you we're know. not talking about the championship belt. No, here, no, 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 no. Well, it was their championship belt. It was that leather belt. Go get dad's belt. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I not necessarily with my 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 siblings because they were like three years or six years younger than me, and my parents would break my neck. So as soon as we finished watching wrestling, me and I had a friend named Simon. Bitten, yeah, 
and we would go back and go in the grass, you know what I mean? And then we'd practice these moves or, you know, if we, it was during school time, gym time, you know, you had all the uh, gymnastic stuff, the crash mats, yeah, yeah, yeah. and we just do stupidities. So, oh, wow. uh, yeah, for sure. That's amazing. And uh, where did you grow up, by the way? Okay, well, I grew up in Chamonix Laval, big shout out. Well, yeah. originally, I'm from Barbados. I was born in St. Michael's, Barbados. Okay. Came here very young with my parents uh, on Canada Day. Uh, we first lived in Cote d'Inege for a couple of years until my parents would be able to financially uh, move us from an apartment to a house in Chamonix Laval. Okay. Chamonix Laval, for the longest part of my life, has been home. It's always been home, even when I'm gone. Uh, and I moved in a to different locations. I always came back. In fact, I'm back at Chamonix Laval, almost in the same vicinity. Nice, nice, nice. So, uh, yeah. So, I've been living in Laval forever. I'm, I represent Laval. Like, Laval's colors are purple. I bleed purple. <laughs> nice, nice, Big nice. Time. Chamonix Laval. So, do you speak Greek? Uh, hey, of course. <laughs> Listen, I don't take any kind of malakias. And if anybody in the crowd gives me any shit, I tell them, esto, diallo. Oh, hey, there you this go. This Mavro knows what he's talking oh, about. Yeah. Yeah. Even I got that all one. All right, right. <laughs> all right. Let's get it going <laughs> we're not fooling around yo i just had marathons of lackey yesterday oh that's yeah delicious. we're not we're not fooling around dude i'm i'm the black greek what <laughs> they call me chocolate zeus there you go <laughs> what <laughs> what that is awesome yeah man all right so you grew up in laval and um how do you first start uh getting into wrestling yourself like actually wrestling All right, so now we're going to fast forward a little bit because, like I said, I was a fan, and all my friends, majority, loved wrestling. We used to wrestle at a local Y and, and, and do that. So it was always, like, like I said, in my DNA. And then, you know, at one point you grow up. You know, it's 16, 17 now. You're checking out yeah. girls, cars, stuff like that. So you move it away from it. So uh, I, I used to play football up to semi-pro level. And I used to play in the States uh, for the Pla uh, Plattsburgh uh, North Stars, Lake City Stars, All right, nice. semi-pro uh, for the Empire Football League. Anyways, there was a football house, like uh, the group of us where we were living. And we were watching wrestling. And I saw uh, a wrestler, Sean Waltzman, uh, the one, two, three kid. Yeah, Sean Waltzman. X, yes, yes. X-Pac. Mm -hmm. Right. So I looked at him, and he was less than 200 pounds. Amazing wrestler. Yeah. But I saw him, and he fought Razor Ramon, and he beat Razor Ramon in that particular for <laughs> yeah. the storyline. Yeah. And I... And I just screamed at the TV. I'm like, if this guy can make it, I can make it. At that time, I was six foot two. I was 300 pounds. I loved wrestling. Oh, so my, yeah. my friends were like, put your money where your mouth is. I'm like, yo, I could do this. They're like, yeah, join. I said, I'll join a school. They're like, bet. I bet you 100 bucks you won't finish it. So there was seven of us. So it would be like 700 bucks. So I'm like, all right. So I, I started looking. Uh, I used to collect the magazines, and I would always, in the back, they would talk about, like, the local wrestling promotions. Or, right. Yeah, okay. All right. So not even wrestling school, but promotions. So there was a promotion called NCW, Northern Championship Wrestling, okay. which was situated in Montreal. So I always remember that. So then I start looking on the Internet, and I found a number. So when I contacted uh, the gentleman, um, his name was Bertrand Hebert. He's a, a well-known, established uh, wrestling um connoisseur he's written some some very impressive books uh cool. by himself and with another gentleman pat laprade uh, oh, i know pat laprade yeah, yeah, so, yeah so they definitely know their stuff in wrestling okay. but back then he was the promoter so i contacted him i said hey i'm very interested into joining uh, professional wrestling he then sent me to another gentleman who was in charge of the training his name was mark pilon he had a wrestling uh moniker uh, mark the grizzly and For the longest time, before I became a coach, he was the man uh, producing a lot of the top talent in Quebec. Like nice. he, he set 10 to 15 years. It was just all of his guys all over Quebec doing really good. So when I first called him, I said, hey, listen, uh, I'd like to be a pro wrestler. He's like, school's booked. There's too many people. Call back in six months. And he hung up on me. Wow. So I was like, <laughs> who the fuck is this? <laughs> But I'm so competitive. I'm like, all right. So I waited six months. Now you call again. To the day, to the hour. So I call them. I'm like, hey, I'd like to be a pro wrestler. They're like, the school is. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. I said, I'm six foot two. I'm 300 pounds. I'm an athlete. Mm -hmm. I wrestle. I, I play football for the Empire Football League. I just had an NFL tryout. I, I went to an NFL nice. combine in Connecticut. Just came back from that. And I said, I've seen the wrestlers on the website. You're telling me you can't use me? I'm not good enough for your school. So he's like, all right, big mouth, come to the school. So I was like, oh, shit. So then I prepared myself because 
in the past when you used to read about these old school guys, you know, they would try you, they would try to test you and, and you try know, to hurt you and too. try to hurt yeah, you. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm, I'm like, these guys are probably going to break something, but they'll remember me if I got to dig out an eye. So I remember before going to my tryout, you know, I mean, I had a background in grappling, I, you know, uh, competitive wrestling, but there was, okay. a, um, uh, I was, I was grappling for a gentleman. I can't remember his name. Uh, we'll, we'll circle back to it, but this guy was really good in the art of grappling so much that back in the day, um, uh, Wazo, I don't yeah, know, yeah, Wazo the, the, and the um, MMA fighter, yeah, the MMA fighter and um, the middleweight champion UFC George uh, St. Saint Pierre, Pierre, David Loiseau, they, and they were Saint in Pierre. my advanced class, they were in the advanced class of that place. This is even before they jumped off. So, this gentleman was training all these guys in the art of submission wrestling, he was amazing. So I got myself ready for that because I'm like, if they guys put these, you know, if these guys put their hands on me, yeah, yeah, yeah. boom, and I had a background in boxing. So I just remember training. So when I finally got there, the gym was situated. It wasn't even a gym, but I'll explain. It was situated on top of a bowling alley. So I remember going there. I said, I want to impress them. So I had my EFL, you know, track suit. You know, I was like, I was like a 300 pound, like a uh, prime time Dion. I had the gold, the bling, I had a bag, yeah. you know, everything. I wanted to go there and let them know, Hey, I'm an athlete. So uh, I opened the door and then I see these two small guys, you know what I mean? <laughs> a little small mat. And I see this coach and I'm like, this must be the wrong place. I went back downstairs, look for the address. I'm like, no, this is it. So, but at that time I didn't realize he had two beginners that was just starting out. And he saw me, he's like, uh, are you uh, Rodney? I said, yeah, I am. And he chopped me across the chest. What? Yeah. He on just, the spot. On like the that. spot, gave me a <laughs> chop. And the first thing I did was I sold it. Okay, great. So just yeah. instinctively. Yeah. So once I sold it, he's like, okay, you're good. And then he later explained, he's like, you know, he, I was like the first Anglophone uh, guy there. Plus, and he even said, he goes, you're black. I didn't know you came in here. You look like a gangster, da, 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 da. <laughs> but after that, you know, he taught me the fundamentals. Um, I later went on and trained at the Inoki Dojo, the New Japan yeah, Inoki yeah, Dojo. Yeah. Oh, you went to Japan too, well, man. Yeah, but the, the dojo was situated in um, in California. Okay. And uh, Ka Kendo Kashin, he was a, uh, a well-known wrestler. He was a former Olympian. Uh, in in pro wrestling, he was a all Japan cruiserweight champion, tag team champion, a, nice. a real badass. He was the one that was teaching me. So after I took off uh, and I trained at NCW, I had an opportunity. And how I got the opportunity is that um, later on I was wrestling into uh, I was wrestling for the NWA, the National Wrestling Alliance, yeah, yeah, the yeah. oldest governing body of professional wrestling, and they had an anniversary show. Inside the anniversary show, uh, I had a match. I was defending the British Commonwealth Championship against Fergal Devitt, otherwise known as Finn Balor. Oh, wow. So okay, me and Finn okay, Balor, okay. we had a match, and the person that was in charge of hiring people saw us, liked us, and that's how I got invited to go to the Inoki Dojo okay. and train under New Japan. That's awesome. Wow, yeah. what a story. You yeah. really went. That's what I love about the wrestling guys and girls, that they really go for it, and they yeah. it, they they keep quite a, a track of, of uh, what, what they've done and you can see that yeah. they really wanted it. It wasn't not handed to them. They had to work hard. So now uh, as you're growing up, uh, you obviously watched it then it motivated you to do it later. Anybody that inspired you to, to do it? Like uh, yeah, maybe sure. somebody on TV or? Big time, uh, big time. Uh, first of all, before I even you know had I saw a pro wrestler. I saw two pro wrestlers even before I decided I wanted to be a pro wrestler. Um, one time, my parents were having, uh, they were going to get, a get together to go to a picnic somewhere in Plattsburgh. And there was a gentleman there that was built like a, like a truck. And I'm like, who's that? And my dad's like, oh, he's, he's a wrestler. And before my father finished the sentence, I'm already talking to this guy. <laughs> and I'm like, are you a wrestler? And he's like, yeah, I'm a wrestler. And I'm like, is wrestling fake? Oh, and this, yeah. and I'm eight years old, right? And he just looked yeah. at me. He's like, who am I going to have more loyalty? Somebody who asks me that or the person who pays me? And I'm like, the person who pays you. He's yeah. like, right. And he just walked away. Okay. <laughs> so, but anyway, to answer your question, uh, Macho Man Randy Savage. Great wrestler. Dude, uh, he was exciting. 
you couldn't figure out if he was coming or going. Yeah. He had so much charisma. He could wrestle his ass off. His presentation was amazing. The whole contrast with Elizabeth. Him, during the time, like early uh, 84, 85, his fuse with Tito Santana, with Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Yeah, it like it's classics. Dude, classics, WrestleMania yeah. three man, changed yeah. my life. So he was a person, general, uh, for sure. Ric Flair. Mm-hmm. And the reason why for Ric Flair, he was the professional. He, I loved his promo style of where he always bigged up his competitors and in wrestling you learn when you do a promo you have to do that if i sit there and i start shitting on you nobody's going to come and see you yeah, but if exactly, i tell you yeah. oh dimitri's the man he's strong he's fast uh you know he's, he's he's well versed in the art of pro wrestling now it gives a curiosity for the crowd to come see can i beat yeah so and how he conducted himself how he looked the suits and everything uh styling and profile oh my yeah. god I, I i stole a lot from him when i you know, in New Japan, they tell you, look for three wrestlers you want to emulate. So Macho Man was one. Uh, Ric Flair was the second. He always wore suits. So when I first started out, man, I, I didn't have the baller's budget, but I made sure I had different suits. I would come with the suits, with the bling and everything, okay. and I made sure my wrestling style was, if I was going to face you, I would big you up so much so that if I do beat you, then I'm even better, and if I lose, well, everybody said, well, he was going up against somebody so great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it was a win-win. Win-win. So that was him. Uh, there's another gentleman you may not, may or may not, Dr. Death, Steve Williams. Yes, I know. That. He had a football background. He was just a tough guy, and what amazed me was growing up, uh, the first shows I was watching was like international wrestling. Then, of course, there was WWE. I used to watch Stampede Wrestling, and it was on TSN at the time where you had to pay for TSN. So yeah. it came in scramble. So the reason why I can't read properly and I need glasses is because I used to watch the static. <laughs> the trying scramble. To the scramble. <laughs> but uh, when I was in the States with my parents, I got a chance to watch Universal Wrestling Federation, the UWF. And I never saw that before. And it's the first time I saw him. And what was crazy was... He was in a match, uh, got busted open um, by mistake, went to get 108 stitches, and then came back and finished the match. 108 so, stitches? Over his eye. The epitome My of God. toughness. Yeah. So when I saw him, those were the three. Later on, you know, uh, style-wise, as far I was a big guy that was agile, so I would look at Bam Bam Bigelow. Nice. Yes. I'd look at uh, uh, Vader. Because these were big guys that could move unconventionally. That's amazing. Uh, and then you're an active wrestler right now? Yeah, I'm still a- wrestling. And a coach, right? And a coach. I, I own a, a pro wrestling dojo uh, for 20 years. It's considered uh, one of the top schools. I don't say it. I'm not bragging, but it's, it's the facts. We teach the basic fundamentals. And it'll be 20 years uh, this year. And uh, what's great about I must have trained at least easily more than 500 people i've done seminars in england ireland dominican republic uh spain the states wow. um i prepared a couple of people for ww tryouts kevin owens came to my school nice. trained for three months to get ready for his tryout uh he graciously said that if it wasn't for me he would have never got signed i think that's bullshit but i'll take it I was uh, going to ask you about him and yeah. uh, Sami Zayn. Uh, also, obviously, yeah. when we think about Montreal wrestlers right yeah. now, they're like the biggest, I think, that we've ever had. Yeah. So uh, so that's amazing that you had a hand in there with yeah. uh, Kevin Owens. Obviously, Kevin Sami Zayn, no? No, but uh, his first championship bout ever was against me. He was oh, like, so he, you wrestled him. Yeah, yeah I wrestled oh, wow. him. It was his 10th match, and we were in a promotion, and I was the champion at the time. And he came up to me, he's like, uh, you know, I can't wait to wrestle for this. And I, and I noticed he was good. And I said, okay, let's talk. And then all of a sudden, like at the speed of light, he's breaking down like, okay, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do this. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa son. Yeah. You know what I mean? But then we had a match. And I knew he was good because he did not wrestle like somebody who only had 10 matches and still needed some experience. Of course, there, there had to be growth and, yeah. you know. He, he did his stuff, but for 10 matches fighting me, and at that time I was already wrestling for five or six years, and I was like the company's champion, yeah. and we had a competitive match, and he was good. And also I had a chance to, I don't know if you know the hit row in WWE. Uh, I've heard of that. Okay, well, Brianna yeah. Brandy, uh, I went to Dominican Republic. She's from Canton, Ohio, but we went there to train her, get her ready. Nice. She signed there also. There's another gentleman who came to my dojo. His name is Sidney Bateman. Real 
great talent. He's 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 from the Cirque du Soleil background. Oh, okay. well, yeah, yeah, yeah. A, amazing acrobat, uh, acrobat. Most importantly, a very good soul, and a good person, and a good friend. And uh, he went, and he's currently at WWE now. So uh, nice. there's another gentleman also. He, I didn't train him, but he used to be at my shows all the time. The gentleman's name is uh, Sheldon Jean, and uh, you know I felt he was so good that he deserved a WWE tryout. So I got a WWE tryout for him. Okay. Uh, he didn't get in, but right now he's currently at Impact Wrestling and he's doing amazing things. And he's somebody that people need to look out for. Oh, and they develop in, in smaller promotions like that, like yeah. DNA, uh, like an yeah. Impact. And uh, so you you uh, you yourself, I've been through six trials. You yeah. come for, uh, tell me about the, the, the funnest one or the... None of them, none of them. None of them I, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you I'll tell you why. Because... I made the mistake, and you know, experience is a beautiful thing, and that's what I try to portray to my students now. Like sometimes, you have to learn through your failures to improve yourself, and in a way, I had an opportunity to do that. But the first time I had a tryout was because Pat Patterson was at a show. I was wrestling for a promotion at the time in Montreal uh, in 2010 called A Top of the World. It was uh, owned and operated by uh, Marc Blondin, who's usually the French analyst for all the yeah, WWE. Yeah, on TV. On TV. He used to be, yeah, yeah. And yeah. also Sylvain Grenier, who used to be... Uh, La Résistance. La Résistance. Yes. So it was their promotion, and uh, they would uh, rent out arena shows, and they would tour across Quebec. And I was at a, one of their arena shows in Montreal, and I had a match, and Pat Patterson was there. And Pat Patterson came up to me, he's like, why haven't I seen you before? And I'm like... I don't know. And then he paid me the best and worst compliment ever. He said, if I would have met you 10 years ago, you had the potential to be another rock. And I'm like, I need to time But travel. it's too late. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's too I late now. To But he still got me the tryout. So okay. what happened is when I got to the tryout, instead of doing what I've always done well, what brought me to the dance, now I'm second guessing myself. So th my first tryout was in um, Ottawa. And I, at the time, it was called the Scotia Bank Arena. I think it's changed now, or vice versa. So I'm there, and Sami Zayn's there, but he's under contract as uh, in Ring of Honor, so he can't participate. So he's there, uh, and then a few other like indie guys from Canada that are well known and stuff like that. And now I see Dean Malenko watching. I see uh, Undertaker and a couple of people. They're all there watching all these newbies, and uh, the person that was in charge of the of the the tryout he used to be in um italian dude he was in ecw then he was in wwe um can't remember his name but anyway so he picked me and he told me pick somebody to get in the ring so i grabbed somebody that i knew and instead of going into how i am like talking interacting with the crowd i'm like okay i'm a really good wrestler i'm going to show them how how good my chain wrestling is you know okay, so yeah, i yeah. did that and i didn't mess up but his 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 critique was, you're a good wrestler, but you have no charisma. Whereas charisma yeah. is <laughs> my number. Thing, yeah. was, <laughs> and I'm like, ah! <laughs> so, so then after that, I get another call from Pat Patterson. And they said, look, listen, you, because he saw another show of mine. He's like, you, you need to go to the WWE. And what's funny is I never thought before prior, it was never a thought for me to go to WWE. It wasn't like an end goal or it something was like never, that. I didn't, even th I didn't even think it was even possible because back then, you know, it's not like now where there's a lot of connections, things on the internet, it's a lot easier. It, it wasn't like that. And all I wanted to do was win an NWA title and travel to e England to wrestle. That, that was my bucket list. I didn't have... So when they said, listen, you know, invest in yourself. Pay uh, $1,000 and go to FCW, which was the precursor to the performance center. Center that they have no... Yeah, yeah. Go there for a week, show them your stuff, get signed. And I always joke to Sylvain, I said, Sylvain, I'll give you 10% of my contract. He said, okay, so make sure you get signed. <laughs> so I went down there, and at the time that I was going down there, Abdullah the Butcher was, was being indoctrinated for the uh, Hall of Fame. Okay. Now, one of my other gimmicks that I have is the son of Abdullah. So when I'm not oh, through yeah. Onyx, yeah, yeah. And when I go, when I go outside of, of Montreal or Canada, because people know me as Drew, 
I wrestle as the son of Abdullah. So I got the genie pants. I got the, the horn tip boots, uh, nice. stabbing people with forks and stuff like Did that. Did you have to like pay some sort of, uh, I don't know, like a royalty or like, no, I'm sure he, work? I'm sure he would have loved that, but I just, <laughs> I just asked for permission and that's oh, the so problem. You asked him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, okay. I have pictures with him. I met with him and it's funny cause it's a full circle. We'll get back to the Abdullah thing. So yeah. because Abdullah was getting indoctrinated, I'm like, okay, instead of being drew onyx, I'll be Abdullah during the prac the, the tryout. Okay. So that way they'll be like, maybe, you know, he, Abdullah could manage him and, and that's yeah, his way yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. So I went there and, um, I did well, but there is a couple of things that, you know, like Dusty, like I'll tell you who were there at the time that, that was judging it. Uh, Ricky Steamboat was there. Dusty Rhodes was there. Steve Kern was there. Um, there was a gentleman that used to be in a tag team called Eminem. Um, yeah, Joey Mercury. Joey, or, uh, not, not is, who's the other guy? I think it's Joey Mercury. Uh, jo Johnny Nitro. No, it was yeah. Joey Mercury. Yeah. So Joey Mercury was there, and they're the ones who were conducting that tryout. Okay, cool. And there was a lot of people and stuff, and it was like a three or four day affair, and everything was good. Everything was good. Um, in the daytime, we do some some drills. And then we'll, they had an amazing buffet. WWE has the best the food. catering. Everybody's what? always yo, talking about that. Yo, <laughs> yo, don't sign me. Just let me eat for free. Dude, so, but that's how they get you. The catering, there's steak, chicken. So, vlogging, so everything. Everything. <laughs> everything. But that's how they get you. Because you'll practice, then you'll eat like a pig, uh -huh. and then pay the price. So yeah. I say, no, you're not going to catch me. I've been here before. Yeah. So I'm taking two pieces of lettuce. I'm taking <laughs> half a piece of bread. I'm eating chicken and spitting it out. I am not going to get caught. I am not going to get caught. So, and then after the practice, then it was uh, Harry Smith came and gave us uh, a speech. Next day, it was IRS. Came nice. a speech. Then Pat Patterson came down and he wanted to see how I was doing. Gave me a speech. You know, gave a speech. So I'm like, okay. So then the next night, they're like, okay. Uh, not, uh, the next day is that we're going to practice. And then at the end of the practice, just before lunch, we're going to do matches. So, okay. So we're doing the match. And my match was match of the day. We, we tore up. Nice. It was supposed to be six minutes, the match. But it was so entertaining. Dusty's like, yo, keep this going. Keep, keep this going. Keep going nice. And what freaked them out was at that time I was 380 pounds but I was 380 pounds that could do a leapfrog that could yeah. do a lot of athletic things so when I'm busting all these things they're like whoa so at the end of the of the like the draft I got the top so I'm like you know what I I deserve this yeah so I look at the buffet today and <laughs> just based on the three days it's been always speeches right yeah you, you know you work out you eat then two hours speech you could digest and then some little small drill. I said, so, you know what? I deserve this. Dude, I ate like an Ethiopian <laughs> who's never seen food. I gorged myself. I ate for the three days that I did not eat before. Do you understand? I ate other people's food. Do you understand? I had the steak. I had the shrimp. I had food that I didn't even like. The dessert, oh my God, instant diabetes. I yeah. ate so much food. So now I'm leaning back. And I got my hands on the stomach, and I'm like, what guest person that they're going to have? Just the day before, it was Natasha, um, Natasha, what's her name? Uh, I'm terrible with names right now, too many cheer shots. Anyways, it was just just everybody, you know? So so I'm like, okay, who's going to be the guest speaker today? They're like, they're like, okay. And all of a sudden, I start seeing them bring out big garbage cans, and they're putting plastic in the garbage cans. And I'm like, why are they doing this? People are going to puke. Right. Blow up <laughs> drills. Oh. So now no. they want to test to see if you got some guts. I got some guts. I have too much guts now. So I'm yeah. like, I'm in trouble. So the drill was, like, now is to see how tough you are, yeah. how athletic you are, and can you take the heat. Yeah. So the drill was, you're inside, there's a lineup of 20 people just waiting to get in the ring. So what happens, you're in, you're in the ring, the first drill, they sweep your legs, take a bump, they pin, you kick out. Then they shoulder tackle you. You take a bump, they pin, you kick out. Then they snap mirror you, take a pin. So you're taking three pins from 20 people, 60 pins, oh my God. 60 <laughs> kick outs. So I'm like, how's this gonna yeah. go? So I get in the line, but I make it look like I'm going slow. So I end up to be the last person in the line. So I'm okay. like, I need to see how this is gonna go. 
So there's one guy that was bigger than me, 450 pounds. Oh my and, god. Yeah, but he was the guy that I wrestled and we got like match of the night. Oh nice. So so yeah, so I'm like all I got to do is one more kick out than this dude. Than him. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't look like an athlete that, and nothing against him, but I'm like if he does four, I do five, they'll be like, ah, the fat guy. Okay, yeah, all yeah, right, yeah. cool. <laughs> right. So I see the first guy get in. Now, the first guy was has been used as uh, an example. Like, he must have been at the tryouts before. He looked like Stone Cold without the beard. Do you understand? Okay, okay. So this guy is in shape. He's looking good. Anytime one of the coaches, like Rick, Rick Steamboat, would be like, uh, you, number one. And we all had tags, right? So yeah. we had, like, sticker. Number one, come over here. Show them this. And he's doing it. I'm like, ah. It's like the model student. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. like, fuck. He's he's because there's four people that get signed, okay? So he's gonna be one of the people that get signed for sure. So I'm like, okay, I want to see how he does. Like 60 kick, 60 uh, kickouts. Fuck. He's in shape. Of course he's gonna do well. After the third, after the third one. So sweep the leg, kick out, uh, shoulder tackle, kick out, snap mirror, kick out. Rips his tendon. He's out. Oh. And I'm like, yo, if Superman over there I can't do it, can't fucking do it. <laughs> What am I? What am I doing here? Yeah. And, and the whole time my stomach's bubbling. It's like, oh fuck. So so I see that, and then I'm like, okay. So then other guys do it, and I'm like, okay. I just got to do one more than the girls because it's guys and girls. These girls are from Femascara, Wonder Women, all of them. They're yeah. all doing it. So they're going through all 60 people. So you know, I go in and I'm sweeping them. I'm snap marrying, and they're all kicking out. Guys, girls, they're kicking out. And I'm like, oh shit. So. I told you I'm in a group of 20 and I'm the 20th one by seven. I'm like, I'm not going to make this. I don't care. I walk out of line, take my two fingers, stick it in my oh throat. My God, just to feel it. <laughs> Sewage. I, I didn't give a shit. Went back in. All I see is Dusty Rhodes going. Good job. No, yeah, that's yeah, smart yeah. move. Yeah, smart yeah, move. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and I'm, I don't care. Just fucking barf in my beard. I'm like, yo. <laughs> so now, so now, so now. We're going, we're going, we're going, we're going. We get to the guy before me, 450 pounds, remember? Yeah. And, and everybody's doing it. I Nobody failed yet. Nobody failed. I'm like, these motherfucking athletes. Yeah. Nobody. The girl that I, I'm like. So now I'm like, okay, dude, it's, 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 it, you got to help me out. Yeah. You got to help me out. Big man, all 20. All 20. <laughs> I get in the ring, our father who art in heaven, hello be thy name, thy kingdom. <laughs> and we're starting to do it, and like, I'm competitive. So... I'm that type of person that will burst into flames before quitting. Okay. Uh, th that's how yeah. I am. That's a, yeah. like, I will pass out before I'd be like, I can't do it. I just can't. Yeah. Like my, so we're going fifth person, sixth person, seventh person. By the seventh, I'm tired now. Eighth person, ninth person. Now I'm trying to focus. What would Rocky do? Tenth person, eleventh yeah. person. <laughs> I'm thinking about my mother. Oh my God, please, mom, dad. Eleventh yeah. person, twelfth person. I'm still in it. All of a sudden, uh, the gentleman that used to do the wiggle, Norman Smiley, runs oh, to the yeah. ring. Uh, Fox Vivica is it not Vivica? Uh, Vivica Fox. Oh, uh, no, that's the, yeah, the, that's the she looks like she looks like. But her. whoever Fox, they're coming. Yeah. Come on, Abby, you can do it. All of a sudden, I'm getting the fucking Rudy chant, like yeah. Rudy, Rudy, <laughs> and I'm going through it. I'm going through it. I'm going through. It. I do the whole twenty. Joey Mercury runs runs across the gym. He goes, "Hey, the two fattest guys did it. There is no excuse for you guys to fuck up." All you hear is a universal groan like, "Ah." Oh. <laughs> Cuz even them they're like the same thing I was doing for the the guy who was 450. I'm sure everybody's like, "I just got to do one more than Drew." That guy, yeah. That, so that happened. So that was an experience. So now we finished that. We're all exhausted. And I'm like, "Okay." Then the next day, I can't even move. When that night, I was so sore. Luckily, my girlfriend w was, you know, she flew down with me, whatever, whatever the case is. She took my duffel bag, filled it up with ice, and I had, like, a, I, you know those ice baths? Yeah. Dude, it was needed. So then the next day, we had to do a match. I didn't get, like, star match. It was still a good match, but it wasn't like how it was before. And then we had to do promos. The promos, I killed it. I, I busted a rap, and I involved everybody that was in there. I, I freestyled. Okay, nice. You know what nice. I mean? Like, so then uh, once I did that, then like, after uh, you're like the original uh 
Max Caster. Yo, fuck Max Caster. Look, listen. <laughs> I bring the slaughter. Yo, I bring the slaughter. I see you over there with the lemon and the water. As I keep on going, yo, I make it mad. Yo, I'm not like Vlad, but I see you with your paper and pad. As I keep going right now, I do what I like. All three of us are chilling. Three of us with the mics. As I keep on going, you know my rhyme is pure. I look at his laptop. It says now, sure. As I keep it going, I'ma cut you. You made me a protein drink with peanut butter. So I could do that shit all day. Yeah. So, so I'm doing that. And then the first thing Dusty says is like, you, you dress like a lawyer, you're well-spoken, why are you doing the Abby thing? So once again, instead of doing what I was doing, I'm trying to trying to please Cater people. to them, yeah, 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 I get it. So now they're deciding who's going to get signed. So every 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 tryout from, from back to Bruno Sammartino, they pick four people. They pick four people. So we're waiting, I'm in the locker room, and a gentleman comes up to me, and he had a terrible, in his match he got a concussion, uh, he looked like the he looked like the dude he looked like Carlito but taller and built more built. Okay. Well, he's built now like Carlito. If you look at him, he looks yeah, yeah. looks amazing. But that's how the guy looked. He was tall, so he had a concussion, and his promos were really bad. So he goes to me and he says, "Look, listen, uh, how do you, how do you freestyle like that? Teach me that." I'm like, "Dude, I can't teach you how to freestyle <laughs> yeah. in five minutes." <laughs> he's like, uh, "I'm gonna go back home." I said, "What?" And he goes, "Yeah, it's eight hours away by car. I'm gonna go home. I had a terrible tryout." I'm I'm gonna go. I'm not gonna make it. Yeah, yeah. I'm 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 embar I'm an embarrassment. I'm I'm gonna just sneak out through the back door. I'm like, dude, finish what you started. You came here for a reason. Even through your failures, you, you learn. It, it's a learning experience. Yeah. Don't ever be a quitter. Stick it out. All right. So now we're sitting down, and the gentleman's name was Robert. So they're sitting down, and they said, okay, this year we usually have four people, but because of budget cuts, it's only gonna be two. So oh. we're gonna pick one guy and one girl. So they picked the girl, and it was an Australian wrestler. She wrestled for years for them, an Australian girl. I can't remember. Not the ones that were paired up together. And Are you talking Paige? No, no, Paige, Paige. She's from England. Uh, no, oh. it was another girl, but uh, Aussie. Okay. And uh, so she got it. And then they're like, the winner is, now my, 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 my government name is Rodney. So I hear raw, and I'm about to faint. I'm like, this is my moment. <laughs> Oh, I'd like to thank the Academy. I'd like, to thank, <laughs> I'd like to thank my attorney, Eli. We did it, Eli. We did, you know. And they say Robert, the same dude who was about to leave. The that same, guy. that. Wow. And I'm like, fuck, I should have let him quit. Yeah. I well, should have yeah. let him quit. <laughs> this is bullshit. So I'm clapping. And, and he's like, he's like somebody who's like an ugly girl at the Miss America. He's like, I am, <laughs> me? <laughs> me? So he walks and, and he gets it. And I'm happy for him. And I, you know, and I give him the look. Like, imagine you see, if you would have left. You shouldn't have left. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, fuck, I should have kept my mouth shut. So, anyways. So now there's a listing of how you were ranked. And, and I told you that they took the, usually they take the top four. I look at me, I'm fourth. Oh, wow. I'm fourth. So, so had, regular year, you would have made it. I would have got a contract. Yeah. But Steve Kern came up to me and said, look, listen, you know, right now they're all looking at the Randy Orton cookie cutter type. That's the prototype because he was amazing and he is. Yeah. So they're looking for the next thing. He goes, pro wrestling is like circus. When you go to the circus, it's not just acrobats. You got the strong man, you got the lion tamers, you got the midgets, you got the clowns, you got mm -hmm. the bearded lady, you got the fat man, you got... So pro wrestling, you need that. So he said, whatever you do, don't quit. And, um, and that's it. So then as I was about to leave, the girl who got signed, she came out and she's like, I can't believe I got signed. I said, oh, you deserved it. You worked out. She did. She goes, but they were talking about you. And uh, so then I spoke to Norman Smiley, and Norman Smiley said, you know, every time they try to count you out, you either did or said something, they'd be like, ah, yeah. we got to yeah. keep this guy in the circle. You know what I mean? So because I did not get signed, but I did well, they gave me another tryout. What's the worst injury you've ever had? Because we all know that injuries are a big part of, uh, uh, unfortunately, of wrestling. Okay, where do I start? Um, Just the worst, the, the, the one like, you know. Is my hip. What happened? I, I don't even know. It, I, it wasn't even wrestling related. Oh. I just one day I woke up and I went, uh, 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 <laughs> and that's it. So the only thing that happened in a ring, oh, I'll tell you why. Uh, someone poked out my eye out almost like seriously. My eye uh. was, I, I thought I lost my eye. I don't like outside dives because first of all, the psychology, what I feel behind it or the philosophy is there's a reason why the ring is on the platform so everybody can see you. Yeah. Dives outside into the crowd works when you're on TV, because they could, they could replay it there. There's a Titan Tron, just roving cameras. So 
even if you're on the other side and you don't see the dive, you can still see. You the can camera, watch it yeah, and whatever yeah, like the, that. The TV, yeah. Also, I never liked the. Okay, he's gonna dive. Let's all come together, Let's sing Kumbaya, <laughs> and wait for him. Anytime, if you ever see a video of me, anytime there was a situation like that, as the guy's about to die, I just walk away. I'm, <laughs> I'm not part of this. It's like circle jerking. Why are you there? Everybody's jerking off without the piece of bread. Like, it doesn't make any sense. So I was fighting this uh, great wrestler, Matt Angel, great high flyer, very good person. And we're in Quebec City. And he's like, can I dive? And usually I'd be like, fuck no, learn how to wrestle. But I like the guy. Okay. And He's good, and he's been on one of my... I have a, a cruiserweight tournament that's well-renowned in Quebec, and, and he was one of my winners. I, I, I'm like, you know what? For special for him, situation, I'll do, okay. I'll do it. Yeah. Runs, jumps. I'm there waiting. Digs his oh eye. Oh, my God. And I can feel the, the, the top of my cerebellum being fucking tugged out with his finger. Oh. And I'm like... And this is like the first five minutes. So now I'm like Daredevil trying to, <laughs> trying to wrestle with one eye. But I think that was the worst injury... That I had, yeah. It's crazy because when you see those on TV now, they're they're so overdone now. By the yeah. way, so I feel you when you you're more of a mat wrestler. No, of, no, no? At, I have a background for mat wrestling. Like I have a background in submission, and my chain game is very good. But I'm a brawl. My character is a brawler. Okay. So, but in my match, you'll see some mat wrestling. You'll see some chain. The whole idea is to bring everything, bring some high spots, yeah. you know, whatever. But no, it's just. Uh, as far as high flying, I think it's good and it's incorporated and there's nothing wrong. I just don't like getting my eyeballs poked up. Like it had it been like my chest or whatever. Yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. But since then, I didn't do that for another uh, another eight years until just recently. Uh, one of the guys we're in, I'm not trying to make fun, is actually the place Shibugumu. Shibugumu. Okay, yeah, yeah. I used to always say that. Yeah, where are we? We're in Shibugumu. Shibugumu. No. Oh, Shibugumu or yeah. what? I, so I was actually there, arena show, and the gentleman who I've wrestled before. I, I've always told, like, he asked me, we had three matches. Can I dive? No. Can I dive? No. So he came up to me. And he's like, can I please dive? I'm like, you deserve it. Yeah. So let's now do let's do it. And but nothing happened. Nothing okay. happened. So good okay. job. All right. Well, this this has uh, definitely been super interesting. Now, uh, well, like so I said. I, so wait, I heard there was lines of cocaine. That's uh, no. Uh, that's, your that, that's your option. That was the option. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right. It's not automatic. <laughs> if, you, if you refuse to answer, uh, then it's a line of coke game, uh, or a drink. All you know, right, all right. Let's keep it PC. All right, here. all right. I like that PC. I'm joking. I'm not into drugs. <laughs> so um, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you three pictures, and we're gonna play a game that's called Mary. Fuck or kill. Is this on Pornhub? Uh, no. <laughs> they canceled my subscription. Yo, mine uh, too, but I got another... <laughs> I, I got a hookup. We'll talk after. So, I'm going to show you three pictures. All right. And you got to decide if you want to marry this person. Marry this person. Fuck them. Fuck them. Or kill them. Or kill them. All right. All right. All right. So, let's start right here. Do you recognize this person? I They're no, all in the wrestling business. I have no idea. Who is she? That's Anna J. She's in AEW. She's Anna J. Yeah. So. You're really going to get me in trouble because there's a very good possibility I could be a, a road agent in the future. And when I'm booking people's matches, they'd be like, so you want to fuck me, eh? All right, all right. So, so I'm, just, uh, I'm just doing this for the game. If I ever meet you, this is not how I feel. So I can't see all three. I could either say... No, no, you got to see all three and then you decide. All right. All right? Okay. And uh, yeah, now that you mentioned it, that you might be on the road and all that, our goal is to get canceled. All so, right. Uh, let's, you know, we That's my goal try. too now. <laughs> I'm a team player. When in Rome. All right, let's go. <laughs> this is oh, not to get, I know who she <laughs> is. <Yeah. laughs> you guys are you guys are evil. The way my face, evil. black heart. I like that. Yeah, yeah. I'd fuck her. No, no, I'm joking. Go, go, go. <laughs> Yeah, I'd give it to her. And I'd give her finally, a hug. Oh, uh, sorry I'd give her a hug from behind. She she'll remember me forever. And finally, um, Sunny kiss right oh, here. Oh wow! So you guys are fucking evil. <laughs> so it's a it's a no win situation. Can I just say well, orgy? Uh, orgy, or, all of oh, them. Okay. So Anna J. So but all, all right. I don't want to. Nyla say, Rose. Okay, but kill is so far. Kid. Okay. You gotta all kill right. Something. So I gotta marry one. I gotta fuck one. I gotta kill one. I gotta kill one. All right. All right. All right. So here we go. Here we go. You ready? All right. You guys think you guys got me, but you don't know I'm Druonix. I'm fucking her. Okay. You're fucking, fucking Nyla, Nyla Rose in the ass all okay. day. She will remember me. Yeah, she'll love me. <laughs> you guys are not going to put me in any kind of uncomprising. Hugs from behind. I'll marry her. There you go. 
I don't yeah. want to kill anybody. That, that's the problem. <laughs> that's the no, problem. Don't, don't forget that this is fantasy. It's yeah, okay, fine. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm gonna. Chances are I'm gonna run into these people. You so you wanted you. to kill me? I, I, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, just for jokes. I'm, okay. If all right. If I was gonna be real. Okay. So obviously, I would marry her. Yeah, I think we all would. Yeah, I'd marry her. <laughs> uh, no, I gotta go back because. I'd fuck her. <laughs> I'd, I'd have to see because she looks like the married in con, but I'd have to fuck her. What's her name? Anna J. So I'm fucking Anna J. I'm killing him. <laughs> and I'm marrying him. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I'm killing her. Yeah, yeah. And I'm marrying him. It's him, right? He's a guy, right? Or is I, it tragic? Uh, so you don't even know go, what the. No, he goes by both. So he goes by both. Okay, because I don't want to be. He, she. Okay, because okay. I don't want I don't, I don't want the cancel. Not that I care about the cancel because they. You know, they'll cancel you, but then if you look at your bank account, it still stays the same. So yes, exactly. It doesn't, it doesn't affect you. So, okay. So, so, uh, you're, so. You're, you're, you're fucking Anna J. Uh, yeah. Wait, oh, I'm having carnal, not, I'm having carnal knowledge with J. Yes. Romantically. Let's, let's change it rather than fucking, because fucking sounds <laughs> so fierce. You know what I mean? This girl will oh. say she wants to fuck, though. I'd give it to her. I'd give it to her if I was drunk enough. <laughs> oh, there's the alcohol now. <laughs> fucking alcohol. This is this is her last boyfriend. You see the handprint on yeah, the cross? He's like, no, no. <laughs> so I guess yeah, I'd be like killing her, but I don't. I don't want to. I hear she's a very nice yeah, person. You're marrying and Sunny Kiss. And I, I, yeah, me and Ma me and him. Me and yeah, yeah. is it him or her? I have no idea. Both. Both. Listen, if he cooks, that's fine. You know, I could be like one of those. Um, who are those religious that don't have sex unless they have to get uh, for pregnant? Like a ha Hamish? A Hamish? Uh, Hamish. Hamish, yeah. So I if think. we have a Hamish thing, I'm like, I'll only have sex with you when it's time for us to bear they all, children. They also yeah. all have like 27 kids, though. Who they? Okay, uh, because they're <laughs> cheaters. So so I, I'm, I'm having sex with her. And then, I don't know, we'll open up a, a concubine. I don't know. That is some <laughs> fucked up shit. Well done. Well played, guys. That's fucking evil. Did you do this? There? Did you do that to, with the last wrestler? Did no, you no, no. So God, I get this. I, I get. But the we did this treatment. with like seventy percent of the guests. You should, yeah, yeah. you should do it with the females. Watch, watch them. <laughs> We've done it with females. Oh yeah, we did it. Yeah, did it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> Next time, put my picture in there. See how they. Act. We did that too. We, we put a, pre a previous guest previous there. Guest to another guest. <laughs> good, good, good. Listen, I'll. I have an OnlyFans. I'll hook you up with some good ones. <laughs> I don't have an OnlyFans, but I should. All right. Um. All right, so uh, one of the things that um, that uh, made me want to do this interview when uh, when uh, I didn't know you were going to be this fun because I would have said yes right away. Uh, but Dimitri said that there's a part of you that is really community oriented. Yeah. And uh, this is something that I hope one day to do too. But uh, I want to kind of hear how you go about it. Uh, what is your community um outreach program whatever it is that you yeah. do so if you don't mind just uh, yeah no problem like all like first and foremost I, I get it from my parents my parents are very giving people um barbadian descent uh my father was always a man with the community always helping people so i used to watch him try to emulate duplicate imitate the things that he did and you know everybody thinks their mother's a saint but my mother's really a saint she's a, an assistant pastor at a church and if you're hurt hungry uh, and needs something, she's the first person. She'll help you Yeah, out. so watching a saint in the house all the time, it, it rubs off. So um, I've always been in a position to try to help people. Back in the day, before even wrestling, I used to be a day camp counselor. So nice. like thousands of kids, and I was a day camp counselor for years. So as a day camp counselor, sometimes you're a therapist, psychologist, mm -hmm. Never a psychiatrist. I never give them drugs. But you know what I mean? You, you're always doing things to try to help them and try to be a role model. Luckily, as a child, I had good role models. So, excuse me. And also, my background, even before all the sports, I was a healthcare uh, or a beneficiary assistant for students, for people with muscular dystrophy. Oh, nice. So I used to work with them. I used to work with a, a, a company called Circle of Friends that allowed uh, these individuals to have independent living, to live on their own, supervised and taken care of so uh, whenever there was an opportunity to help somebody like what we have i don't have a, a necessary outreach program but just some things i like to do like i used to always like to work at soup kitchens during thanksgiving and, and christmas just to try to help and sometimes get some of my students i was just telling you before uh without the use of, of 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 instagram or taking pictures 
I would go and, and, and buy like $200 cheeseburgers and then just go and see the homeless and try to hook them up with that. Without. That is amazing. And I, and I did that because I know what it is to be hungry. I know what it is not having someone to look, look at. Um, there's sometimes, and I don't want to say this because I don't want people to take like opportunities or whatever, and I don't think. But if there was a student that didn't have money to teach, to train, we're good. You know okay, what I mean? Yeah, if, yeah. if you showed me your soul and, and you were a good person, and all I ask is that, you know, you, you return the hard. karma, work okay. hard, and return the karma to somebody. Help yeah. somebody else in however you can. So there's a couple of students that I've never told anybody that were in trouble. In fact, there's, you know, one of, one of the coaches at the uh, establishment, because my school is in another um, gym. All of us as owners are working together. Nice. L big shout out to Evans at Little Lab Gym. And uh, one of the coaches there is saying, hey, there's a, a mother that's having trouble with a student, uh, with, with her son that's having problems at school and stuff like that. And the first thing I said is just bring him over there and hopefully him watching um, strong, positive role models, sometimes ethnically, you know, if a black kid sees a black coach and the system black coach is doing great things, you know, you always want to follow your heroes. You want to follow people. You want to have people like, like the wrestler that I saw, the gentleman's name was Del Skinner. You okay. know what I mean? So when I saw him, I'd be like, wow, if he could do it and he, I, can do it. I yeah. can do it. So yeah. I try to do that. So I don't have a program yet, but it's funny that you mention it because I am now looking for that specifically for the schools that anybody who's having issues and whatever, I'm trying to figure out something with the government so we can work in collaboration so I could be compensated. I don't need to be compensated to get paid, but yeah. just to make sure I have the equipment, everything that's needed. And anybody who, who has a, a real story, I'm there for them. That's amazing. Yeah. Drew, very, very uh, inspiring us too because uh, that's something I definitely want to do. Uh, like like a lot of people in growing up in a metropol metropolitan city like Montreal, yeah. uh, there's some rough neighborhoods. Yep. And, you know, you can get easily lost in, 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 yep. in some stuff. So uh, having gone through that and c come out on the other side, I'm like, okay, now how can I look at the people that were you know in the same uh, struggle than i was and try to help so uh definitely uh admire and appreciate somebody like you that's willing to do that and, and it, go, it goes back to you also just the fact that you have that thought you know yeah. what i mean even if you don't have an opportunity to fulfill it in the physical just the fact that that is the thought process that you have that's going to power your karma in proportions that are going to be so good for you in a positive way so I, hopefully you will have that opportunity to do that. Oh yeah, we're, we're working on it and we'll definitely at least take a shot at it. Like, you, you know, you never know Good. where life takes you, but we're going to take a shot at it. Good. So um, now I have been trying to uh, avoid looking directly at this magnificent belt that we have here, the NWA. British Commonwealth. British Commonwealth. You are the current champion right now? Yeah, I just won this title uh, this Sunday against a great wrestler this gentleman his name is Bjork Hacken he's from Belgium he has left his country to come train at my school specifically nice so it can give him an opportunity this guy definitely deserves a, a tryout and uh, there's a couple of guys in my school that do and he's definitely one of them and if I can uh, position myself to give him that opportunity he deserves it so yeah hard fought battle uh, the guy took four of my finishers and his manager botched up and tried to throw some substance in my face. I ducked and Bjork got it. And there you go. And that's how I won. So thank you, Shane Pinto, you prick. <laughs> and um, he's a good guy. But that's it. So but give you a history. Belt was originated in 2005. The reason why this belt was made was because in the NWA, it was very hard to get access to the world heavyweight champion. All okay. right. Yeah. You know, so depending... Uh, how powerful you were as a promoter will dictate how many times he would be able to come and whatever. And of course, the world champion will want to go to the big metropolis areas for a bigger pay rather than just say go to Ohio or yeah, those, yeah, you know, smaller whatever. venues. Yeah. So, so uh, the two uh, the two gentlemen, the two promoters that thought about it, gentleman Ernie Todd, who had a promotion for the NWA because the NWA is almost like McDonald's. It's like as far as you know each. Each country, each province can buy into the NWA and, nice. and gain the benefits. So you get to be uh, an official 
uh, promoter for the NWA. It's like an umbrella group. Uh, group. And what people may or not know is that the NWA is the oldest uh, governing body of wrestling. The WWE came from TNA. TN, mm-hmm. uh, sorry, from, from NWA. The WWE. Uh, Vince Sr. was a promoter under the NWA. Stu Hart was a promoter. So this 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 uh, promotion has a lot of history. Well, history, a lot of, a lot of yeah. history. So what has happened was at that time, the world champion was being licensed, the championship, the world tag team and the world heavyweight was being uh, licensed to TNA. So TNA had the rights to them. Okay. So the only other belt was the North American title, which I was luckily to have also, and the British Commonwealth. So Ernie Todd and Andre Baker. Andre Baker was from England. Ernie Todd was from Manitoba, Canada. They had a relationship. And they said, we got to figure out something to have a major title that's not under the board of commissions. Because in order for a title change to happen, there has to be a board of uh, promoters together. And they decide who's going to get the title. Okay. So if you're not if you're not in favor with the board or if you're not part of the board, you might not get an opportunity. So they said, let's make a belt and have this belt travel, you know, throughout the United Kingdom, throughout Canada. Canada's part of the United Kingdom. So the first fight was a gentleman, Spider, uh, who represented Ernie Toss, Manitoba, and Fergal Devitt, who later became Finn Balor. No, no. And they fought f- for the title. Spider won. And then they had to forfeit the belt. So I went on a tour for both Ernie Todd and both Andre Baker, and they both liked me. And to the point that they convinced me to be a promoter for the NWA. So they helped me get you know, in position to become a promoter. And then they decided, hey, listen, we want you as the, as, as the second British Commonwealth champion, but we don't have a belt. Because when they first fought at the anniversary show in Florida at that time, there wasn't a championship made, so they used an old Florida heavyweight championship. Okay. You know, and made sure the camera didn't really get to see, you know. <laughs> he was like, yay! Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's it. So then they said, okay. And I was just explaining before, uh, I'm a belt mark as far as I love championships. And it doesn't have to be wrestling. Boxing championships, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, MMA cha- I just love how b- good belts look like jewelry, like like cr- like. Like, if wrestlers were kings, these are the crowns. Do you yeah, understand? Yeah, exactly. And it signifies a lot of history in there, and there's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears uh, yeah. that went into uh, not only making, but defending, defending, winning them. So these belts were made by, uh, this belt was made by Reggie Parks, and Reggie Parks is considered the king of championship belts. He passed away. But all the major promotions, all the MMA promotions, used to go to him, and he would make the championships. So when they told me, they said, okay, you handle it. I said, okay. So I contacted Reggie Parks and uh, a gentleman, Ed Schumann, who also passed away, uh, God bless. And he was one of the promoters. And he helped me uh, maneuver around the politics and, 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 and the temperature of the NWA. So he was the person, he was the middleman between me and Reggie Parks. So I actually designed the belt. It was me who created this belt and I made a few other belts. So I originally got this plate... Um, there was a world class championship uh, wrestling. It was in Texas. Uh, the Von Erichs uh, yeah, was part yeah. of it. Okay. Anyways, their world champion was Rick Rude, and he had this belt, like this mm-hmm. belt shape. So I took this belt shape, got the side plates, and then what I did was, I I put the world like the continent, and then I asked to put the flag behind it so it could represent. At that time, there was no belt that ever had that. Once this came out, then. A whole bunch of copies, you nice. know what I mean? You know, which I have no problems or whatever. So I did that. So I put the old school NWA logo, put that. And just as like an Easter egg to me, I put the Barbadian flag where, I'm, where I was born and the Canadian flag where I live. So that was like my little Easter okay, egg. Okay, that was but, for you. Yeah. yeah, but he fucked up and he, he, he put the Bermuda colors. This is the Bermuda. Oh, okay. Ours is darker. So that that's, that's interesting. And there was no room to put heavyweight. So we opted just this, but it's actually the heavyweight title. Oh, nice. And then we put Jamaica, an African continent, New Zealand. So they're all part of the Australia, British Commonwealth. India. Yeah. Yeah, or they were. Okay. You know what I mean? So we did that. And uh, then I had the belt. And then once I had the belt and I was the champion, the first uh, person I fought was a guy named Will Phoenix from Australia. So they're part of the um, Commonwealth. So I won the belt facing him. 
And then right after that, I went to England. I went to Ireland. I went to the States. I traveled all over Canada. And I was, I was one of the people who, who, who built this belt to go places. And then when I lost the belt, and I lost it to Finn Balor. Finn okay, Balor beat yeah. me twice for the belt. And then there was another uh, great wrestler, Paul Tracy. Then he took it to Spain. Then he took it to Germany, I believe. Then he took it to different places. So now this belt is getting traction. And then Carl Anderson had this yeah, belt. Yeah, okay. I know uh, Carl Anderson. Machine Adam, gun. Machine gun. He yeah. was a champion there. Uh, the Ino uh, New Japan, Anoki Dojo, used this. They didn't have a championship. Until they had their championship, they asked me, they said, do you mind if, if we take the belt? Because... I, I didn't have control of the belt. The belt was always in movement and stuff like that. So I said, no problem. I had one of my wrestlers drop the title to them. And then they used the belt. So it added more stature. Nice. And, you know, the belt was in Mexico. It was all over the place. And then Adam Pierce, who was a three or four time, I could be wrong, NW world champion, he beat me for the title. So this belt then was nicknamed the other NWA world champion. Okay, nice. So, so until 2014... Until um, the gentleman from uh, who bought uh, Impact, uh, he's a rock star. He's the uh, guy from the Smashing Pumpkins. Smashing there? Pumpkins, yeah, yes. Yeah. So when uh, he dissolved the NWA and he's the sole owner, this this then became my title in my promotion. Okay. But before it was part of the NWA. Okay, okay. So that's it. And so then, at, at the moment, right now, they're not associated. They're not with associated. The, okay, it's okay. it's okay. just like the NWA Middleweight Heavyweight Championship. It's in Mexico, but they stopped being with the NWA like in 1980, but they still okay, run around. Okay, okay. Because the name still has 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 stature. Has value. And it sure, has yeah. value. So, okay. you know what I mean? It's the NWA. It's just all the matches are not commissioned by the NWA. We no longer say... Uh, This match is sanctioned by oh, the National yeah, Wrestling okay, Line. Okay, okay. But that's the name of the title. But even then, when we do our promotion, we just say British Commonwealth Champion. Okay, so, okay. But what's cool about it, I'm going to be going to Australia in uh, August to defend it. So it'll be my first time defending the title. Who are you Australia. fighting? I, I don't know yet, but they have a couple. Of, uh, the name of the promotion is called Wrestle Strong, uh, Wrestle Strong Dojo. And uh, they have a lot of great talent there. So... I know whoever I'm fighting is going to be a good fight. It's going to be competitive. And uh, I take pride in defending this title. You wanted to ask me about my top five or I don't know what. Yeah, you're uh, saying top five promos because you don't think he has good promos. I was just very curious to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was very curious to see who you thought. Because for me, the top five, and not my favorite. Oh, it could be favorite or your best. It doesn't really matter. Um, Hulk Hogan had great promos. If, you, if you've seen his body of work. Ric Flair. Oh, yeah. Um, Jake the Snake Roberts. Arn Anderson, um, The Rock. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, there's a few others, but those are the first five that, you know, even John Cena, who I wasn't like a fan of as wrestling wise. I was hoping you weren't going to say that. Well, listen, uh, this is one thing. <laughs> I, I could always appreciate his hard work and his commitment to wrestling. Yeah. I just felt like at that time, it's like, why does the white guy get the cool black gimmick? Why does he get to, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean, do all that stuff? And everybody else, crime time, they're all ex-criminals. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or, or, you know what I mean, like sexual chocolate. They don't get yeah. the, the badass NWA gimmicks. They, they got to be stereotyped, but he yeah. gets to be the cool-ass Eminem on, 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 on roids or whatever. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so yeah, I that was it. But then I learned, you know, The, the stuff that he does with the Make a Wish Foundation is crazy, and his commitment, and his hard work, and his discipline in the gym. So, you know, what I mean, not everything's always what it seems, you know. But they put in the work. So, anyway, so who do but you? But th those, those I think are great, right there. Those I think uh, are uh, are pretty good. Off the top of my head, uh, I think Triple H had something really. Because, uh, Just because I remember watching Raw back, you know, when the Attitude Era, yeah, when yeah. it was really popular. Yeah. I remember, like, a lot of shows starting with him just being on the mic for, like, 10 minutes. Yeah, but when you're the one. <laughs> no, I know, I know, but, you know I mean? like, but I, I'd no, be, I like, uh, I go, like, but I was excited to watch it, right? That's amazing. And, like, if, if you start and it's somebody that can't carry a promo, you're going to be like, oh, what the fuck am I going to waste my time now? I agree with you. The thing I like about Triple H He committed himself to being the villain. He realized he could never be the number one baby, baby face because yeah. there was Rock and Stone Cold, and he couldn't break that that mold. But those two guys could be the ones he's always fighting. So yeah. he found his niche, and he really played it. And I and I and I loved his heel work. The one time that like never you know not that I never thought of him or whatever the case is, but the one time I saw him badass, 
he fought a cruiserweight, a Japanese wrestler, and he made that Japanese wrestler look like it was WrestleMania main event. And then I'm like, okay. he could work with anybody. Yeah, no, you know? it's very good. Uh, that's top of my head. Maybe not the best, obviously. It's no, but it could to, be your uh, favorite. It could be your favorite. Uh, it, like, it, you can't pass rock, right? You, you, see, you see guys nowadays trying to emulate what he did like 15 years, 20 years yeah. ago, you know? So obviously, uh, great there. Uh, besides that, yeah, Ric Flair has to be up there. Hogan, too. I, I, we, we made fun of him yeah. messing up there, but that, okay. uh, that is one with like, Two, th- two million yeah. promo, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely Jake the Snake could take you on a ride where, like, it, it seems like it's like a lot of real crazy. there. Yeah, like, yeah. You're like, oh, yeah, this guy could. Agreed. But, uh, you know, uh, favorite, probably Eddie Guerrero was very funny, and saying, like, uh, yeah, cheat, yeah. lie, steal, and all that gimmick was he fantastic. Was amazing. He was amazing. Uh, so there, there, there's a lot. Uh, but right now, I think uh, somebody that's, to me, probably the best right now and it's super impressive because he's very young it's uh, mjf you know it's funny yeah i'm gonna tell you something because like i said i pride myself on great promos so it's very hard for me to not give props i'm, I'm all about prop but when i was hearing about him hearing about him hearing about it i just thought he's only good because everybody else is not Do you okay yeah, yeah, yeah. just because everybody there is not really good promos is like yo I'm a great university p- football player, but now when I go to the NFL, there's other great guys. Yeah, yeah. But then I start studying and watching him. He applies his trade, his skill set, how he looks, how he projects himself. He knows how to work the crowd. He's articulate. He is good. He yeah. is good. He is this version of whoever that you think is a good promo. I, 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 uh, I don't know if you saw the, the whole, uh, what do you call that program that they had with, uh, CM Punk. Yep. That was like top notch. Like I remember like, that's what got me back into wrestling. Actually, Amazing. when my friends told me like, then you're going to like this. Cause some of my friends, we used to have this, uh, it was like every year we used to get together, at least watch WrestleMania when it was hot. We were watching every month. Yeah. Uh, and you know, like life says like the same, same problems as you there uh, women and uh, going <laughs> out and so yeah. you stop watching and then you try to get back into it but it was just like maybe that's why i'm not a huge fan of john cena but i thought the pj era was horrible like i i could not watch it and then when uh, AEW started then like my friends told me because some of them never stop like yeah. i guess they're better fans than me no and, <laughs> you know so, like so, listen just ca- you may love your favorite hamburger or steak or sushi Sometimes you get tired. Sometimes you want to try other yeah, things, but then you come back else. and you'd be like, yeah. hey, this is good. Yeah, yeah like uh, the PG era, the, the reason why a lot of people, and I agree with you, because we left and when we came back, it, it was, wasn't the same. It wasn't, it wasn't what we were watching, right? But yeah. you ask these kids, John Cena is Superman. Their hero, he, yeah. What? Yeah. He's, yeah. The, he's the ultimate Captain America yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. And I get it, right? I yeah. get it. Like it's Hulk Hogan of the 2010s or whatever. You Every know? 15 years, yeah. it changes. Yeah. So, yeah, don't. That's yeah, it. definitely good. So now, uh, Drew, um, you told us that, uh, you know, you definitely want to give back to the community. You're expecting, uh, you're hoping uh, to start a, a program from so for uh, the yeah. community, yeah. which we, we wish you uh, to do that. You. Now, your, your your goals in wrestling, what what are your goals? I see you uh, wearing the nice uh, hat of, of your federation. That's your federation? Yeah, that's my TCPW? federation. TCPW? Well. Yeah, TCPW. So Stands for? It Torture Chamber Pro Wrestling. So oh. it's a variation of... The name of the school of my wrestling is called Torture Chamber Pro Wrestling Dojo. The reason why, I wanted something that sounded like the Snake Pit from Wigan or the Lion's Den in California or the Dungeon in Calgary. So, you know what I mean? The Flower Garden wasn't going to cut it. You know, I had to find (laughs) something that, so I'm like, Torture Chamber. So I had that for a while, but then, you know, it kind of scares people because people are like, yo, I want to wrestle, and then they hear Torture Chamber, they're like, yeah, yeah. Like, and this guy's old school. He might yeah, try to he, poke my eye out yeah, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'll wait for Matt Angel. That's his job. <laughs> but uh, so we've had a promotion also. So the reason why at first I did the promotion was to give my students an opportunity to apply their trade. Because usually when you're a rookie, you might not get an opportunity. But I knew what I wanted. So, I, so it's really consistent of friends of Torture Chamber, former students who've been wrestling for years there, and my really top uh, rookies. 
So we've been doing this since 2013. We have a big show coming nice. up. Nice, 10 years. Uh, yep. Nice. Yeah, we've been doing that for 10 years. Like, I've done shows before, but as far as this promotion, 10 years. Oh, that's impressive. Yeah, and uh, it's now in Laval in my hometown. So this is the first year that I've done that since 2005. I used to run shows in Laval at the Recreatech. It's no longer there anymore. Yeah. But uh, we have a big show, uh, end of the season show called Pandemonium. Yeah, it's ten fights. It's an afternoon show. It's on Sunday, June fourth. We have three championships on the line. We have the British Commonwealth Championship against Frankie the Mobster. He's like a Quebec legend. Uh, he's 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 amazing. He's a monster. You're fighting. Uh, I'm Frank? fighting him in oh, the main okay. event. Nice, nice. The tag team is going to be the Super Jack guy. That's yeah, there? Super Jack and athletic is all hell. Are he should have been in the WWE. Are you are you scared of it? Uh, well, you know what's funny? <laughs> I'll I'll tell you the truth. We've we've been fighting for twenty years. Nice. And if we have to do the not 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 for me, he's been beating me every every time. So, <laughs> and he just beat me two months ago uh, for another title in Thetford Mine. So hopefully it'll be revenge. Nice. You know what I mean? So he's in the main event. Then after that, um, we have uh, the triple th is a triple threat tag team match for the Canadian Championship. We have these two brothers called Chocolate City. Uh, picture the Harlem Heat. Picture Quebec's oh, version. Nice, nice. These guys can move. They can wrestle their Love ass Love the off. name, Chocolate City. Yeah, Chocolate. So does the <laughs> girls, man. Uh, feel the yeah. drizzle. So it's uh, it's Wilson Colas and Mustafa Jordan, and they're defending the title against these two individuals called the worst. These guys are just jackasses. The crowd hates these the guys. Worst. The worst. Frankie Varillo <laughs> and Kevin Bryan. These guys are just... I guarantee they'll be your favorite guys on the whole match. These guys are just scum. Scum. They just <laughs> do everything to... It's just so bad. And also this other team called um, Le Kip from Jean Kier. They've oh, okay. been feuding constantly uh, with Chocolate City throughout Quebec. Okay. And now they brought the feud here. So nice. they've been messing with each other. That's going to be uh, the co-main event. Then the best three out of falls, best three out of... Two out of three falls for the Commonwealth Cruiserweight Championship. So the same stature, but for the Cruiserweight. Uh, the champion, the gentleman's name is Victor Castella. He's originally from Spain, legitimate, Barcelona, Spain. Okay. Once again, he's another gentleman that left his country to come to my school to train, to give him an opportunity. Amazing. And he's defending it against a gentleman called Billy Stone. Both of them are the, uh, the owners of the 450 Splash. Okay. And now... They want to know who's the best. And Who then, has the best 450 that's splash. That's right. And in a non-title match, Billy Stone has beat him. So okay. we have an Indian strap match. That's going to be brutal. So Indian strap match is 15 foot of raw high leather uh, attached to your wrist on both ends. And in order to win, you got to hit all four buckles. Yeah. Okay. So these two guys do not like each other. A gentleman named Genesis. Okay. Big muscled uh, dude, uh, about 6'4". Uh, against uh, Stefan Paulson, who has an MMA background. He's a former uh, tag team champion and a ch multiple champion in other places. These guys don't like each other. At the last show, they had a no contest. The match was supposed to start. It never got into the ring. Uh, wow. Ge Genesis had a manager or has a manager named Shane Pinto. Uh, he's a skunk. He's outrageous. Anyways, at one point, he started whipping Stefan okay. with, with a leather belt. So now... It's going to be serious. Indian strap match. And then oh. we have five of them. We have matches with women. We have other tag teams. We have a grudge match. Now, you're not going to miss this. For nine months, these two individuals, Paulo Triassi and Johnny Taco. Johnny Taco is 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 the Spider-Man, the most loved person in the, school, in, in, in the promotion. People love it. He comes out and people lose, lose their stuff. And Paulo Triassi is the biggest jerk in the promotion. <laughs> it is really... The final battle between good and evil. Nice. And for nine months, they've been fighting. So that's it. And if you look on the other side, that's going to be actually my school. And it just shows some of the things that I've done on the past. But June 4th, guys, the tickets is at a Collège Latange. It's at 1,000 uh, Lavenir in Chamdi Laval. Uh, doors open at 3 o'clock. Show starts at 4 o'clock. There's two dark matches at 3.30. And uh, this is it. You don't miss it. It's going to be high impact, high action. Good for the whole family. You cannot miss it. That is fantastic. So don't miss it uh, Sunday, the 4th of June. That's it. Uh, at uh, 4 o'clock, you said it starts, but doors open at 3, at 3 o'clock, right? 3 o'clock, yes. And four. check out the, the dark matches. Who knows? Those are the superstars of tomorrow. There you go. So listen, this was way too much fun. Uh, I'd love to have you back. Uh, down the road to uh, talk talk some more uh, but as we leave I have one favor to ask you right. you're a very given guy All right, uh, cool. like 
got to know you now. It's some super cool. So there's a lot of, uh, you know, people that uh, make fun of wrestling fans and yeah. make fun of wrestling altogether. Yeah. And uh, my partner to my left is one of them. Uh, oh, he, uh, wow. He, uh, Whoa. <laughs> so you've been sitting so, uh, here. You've been sitting enjoying all the jokes, having things, but but you're a hater on the doll. You got to get to the mic and explain so, yourself. <laughs> we had such a great talk. I'm not reading any of the books that you told me to read now. Yeah, so my um, my uh, favor was for yeah. you to cut your best promo you can on uh, on Dimitri. That uh, uh, and I quote, "Why the uh, wait 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 why the fuck do you watch wrestling?" That shit is fake anyways. Did I, did I say that? I quote. <laughs> Dimitri. It, Your best promo. It irks me to know that you breathe the same oxygen that I do. Because one would understand that when you are in the presence of greatness, you are supposed to rub off some of this greatness to make you smart. But after that statement, it lets me know that your learning curve is where the yellow buses, the short yellow buses, and the chin straps <laughs> should be. In fact, they're more Einstein than you. How can you make something sound so ignorant when I thought you were a smart person? I guess you cannot judge the book based on the cover. And that being said, it is no longer as fake as when your girlfriends tell me how you are in bed. <laughs> that is fake. The shoes that you are wearing is fake. I looked at that watch and it's going backwards. That's how fake that is. <laughs> but I don't hold that against you because there's still an opportunity for you to see the light. You can't be that unintelligent. You hang with this gentleman. So what I would suggest that you continue to hang out with them, create an osmosis where you can draw energy. Keep looking at my promos. Try to be like me, buy my shirt. If you buy my shirt, guaranteed you'll gain weight. <laughs> you'll even get a tan and there'll be more melanin in your body. Do not make the mistake again that things are fake because there's nothing fake about pro wrestling at all, all right? Don't make me feel like how I felt when I saw Hulk Hogan talk about gay situations, okay? <laughs> Don't let that happen again. God bless you. Well, that's what I wanted. I, I I could not have said it better. Yes, I really yeah. couldn't. <laughs> so, so on that note, uh, Drew, this has been amazing. Uh, guys and girls, go check him out. Definitely um, June 4th, yes? Yeah, and you can check us all on social media. Drew Onyx at uh, TC Pro Dojo on Instagram. Drew Onyx on Facebook. And Drew Onyx, D-R-U-O-N-Y-X. Also check out uh, the Torture Chamber Pro Wrestling Dojo. We're always looking for people who want to get into pro wrestling, athletes, uh, avid fans, people with passion. Those are the type of people that we want. We have a beautiful 5,000 square feet um, uh, area that's filled with a wrestling mat, a wrestling ring, 18 by 18, and all the functional equipment that you will need to help you get to the next level. So check us out. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. We're even on TikTok. And I will even create an only fans if that's going to make you want to go check this out god bless there you there you go and more most importantly than all you're on the make it happen podcast and Amazing. here's a gentleman who definitely made it happen now i hope you're all out there taking notes and you make it happen too thank you until next time oh <laughs> peace i hope that was good that was fantastic thanks for watching if you want to see more content Click right here for another exciting episode right here. If you want to get in shape, sign up for our online fitness app using the link in the description. Finally, help support us by liking and subscribing. And if you don't want to do none of that, well, at least keep making it happen.